What's happening guys? Mike Smith here with Cal Speed Karting, and this is your Super Series preview for round number two. Last month's season opener did not disappoint in terms of excitement with the best in the sport karting business taken to the newly configured Cal Speed Classical Counterclockwise track for the first time. The facility had only been open about three weeks before then and the conditions were pretty uh, slick still. And it was really the veterans of the sport dominating the top of the charts. With uh, the guy right here we're looking at, Charles Eichland scoring his fourth career win joined by Paulo Franca and Sean Fight on the podium. This time around, the Super Series Circus rolls through the longest of the counterclockwise layouts as Grande Counterclockwise plays host to round number two. And we'll take a look at uh, how the points shook out after round number one in this preview, as well as highlight a few drivers that could make an impact on their debut for 2019. As, of course, we'll also take a look at all of those subcategories as well. And the first thing we're going to do, obviously, is look at that overall championship, which, uh, which Charles actually is the leader. This win last month, uh, obviously <laughs> getting his photo taken here for this thing. Uh, but it's actually the, the next guy that I'm going to be looking at, and that's Paulo Franca, since uh, Chuck's not doing a full season. Franca had a, an awesome start to the day, obviously uh, strong in Ironman prior to. Uh, but he was able to get out into second and hold everybody off. Uh, did a pretty damn good job there at the end to, to make sure uh, he held on to it. Uh, I think he started off pole, too. A very, very strong day for Paulo. I don't think he had a heat win, but he was real close, showing how consistency is really important. So Paulo, essentially your point leader here with 385 points, just in front of Sean Fight, next on the list with 375. A guy who's basically the reigning number two from last year. Not too surprised to see him at the sharp end. Guy's really become one of the guys to beat here in the series. Uh, another one with a solid day, fifth in the Ironman, I believe, uh, just prior to. And they had a really hard-fought third. The whole gaggle of guys. And one of the guys he had to beat was Adam Nagao. Fourth overall. He actually scored bonus points with a pole position to start off the day. And uh, Nagao uh, really carrying some momentum. It was good to see him start off the year. He had a tough, tough 2018 season. But uh, Nagao looking real good right now. And he's uh, just in front of the man, the myth, the legend, John Kimbrell. He actually led the field at the at the start of the A main and was uh, running second for a while. But as soon as the the pack caught him, he, he was just off of Chuck at the beginning. As soon as the pack got him, they just swallowed him up. Like nobody would work with John Boy. He was uh, he ended up falling a little bit further back. Uh, Three hundred fifty eight points to him. Still don't know if he's going to run a full year. Like the plan was, he was not going to. But he's supposed to run this weekend. And if he can get two in a row and get another solid finish, who knows what could happen? Next up. Masters Championship, Jose De Silva. He's actually just outside the top five overall, 356 points to his name, currently leading the Masters Championship uh, going into uh, round number two. Former champion two years ago. He, uh, he did not have a good defense of that last year, but starting out on top is the best way to do it. And he actually fought the entire time with this guy, Diego Morales, on track, it seemed like, almost the entire day. Only one point splitting him. That should actually say 355, not 255. I need to get with Sarah on that one. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, uh, it's, it's going to be interesting this weekend because actually we're not going to have Diego Morales in the field. Uh, his daughter decided to be born on this day a few years back. <laughs> so Diego's missing it to, uh, to hang out with the, the kid uh, for, the, for the birthday. Uh, yeah, priorities, bud. Uh, you got to do what you got to do. So Diego Morales not going to be hanging out with us. Instead, we'll see what De Silva can do with that kind of free reign away from his rival. And it'll be Randy McKee who's going to try to capitalize on that as well. He is third in the Masters category. Awesome, awesome start for Randy, uh, Randy McKee. Very solid deal there. A uh, guy who's been in the front in the sprint series lately. Uh, and he's ahead of some big Masters names right now. So awesome job out of Randy. Uh, he's also a, a sportsman contender. We'll get to that in a bit. But... Randy McKee, third in the Masters Championship after round number one. Very solid start. Let's see how uh, how things go this weekend. The Grand Masters, Tony Wyka. Uh, he, he This is the way I expected to see things last year. And, man, he had a, a tough, tough role at the beginning in 2018. Ended up coming back, as we have talked about before, going from third to first in the championship in the finale. Well, he's he's starting out top this uh, this time, so... That's that's kind of what we expect to see out of Tony, uh, and uh, he's going for three in a row, but he's got some, uh, as predicted, very, very tough challenges coming behind him and right out of the gate. First eligible year for this guy, John Rice, and he was right there with Tony. Actually battled on course a few times. Um, 
John really shown that he's going to be someone that is going to be fighting for the championship uh, right out of the gate. And of course, we also have Tom Zevin, third in the uh, standings right now for Grandmasters, uh, not too far off these guys. And, and all three of them were, were around each other at some point. Um, and you know, Tom <laughs> Tom led a lot uh, last year as far as the points go, earning the top uh, top points on the day. So I, he's not very far off now, and I expect these three guys to really be making things happen throughout the year. And the last uh, subcategory we're talking about, sportsmen. Evan Karp, killer day. Killer day uh, for, for the season opener. 326 is, is a big, big number for a sportsman driver right out of the gate. And granted, we are talking about the guy who's sixth in sportsman standings last year. He's just out, uh, just inside on the eligibility, and he was third in sprint last year. So he's really been cutting his teeth in the right way. Uh, and solid, solid start to the year for Evan. And he's joined by another sprint series front runner. Actually, the guy who finished fourth in the championship just behind him last year. We already talked about him, Masters. Randy McKee, great start to the year. 297 to his name. Uh, also had a pretty solid A main run, and uh, and was actually just in front of the uh, the sprint sprint series champ and sportsman champ from the previous year. So if you're able to do that right out of the gate, things are boding well for you. And speaking of front runners, Spencer Russell, uh, third right now in the sportsman championship. Um, man, I'll tell you what though, like a lot of rookies uh, in the uh, in the in the A main, they they just don't always get a lot of love, and Spencer did not <laughs> from from the vets. But uh, still looked very, very good through the heats and stuff like that. So Spencer Russell, third in the Sportsman Championship. Solid start to, to the guy who finished second sprint last year and his first Super Series season uh, here in 2019. And there's a host of uh, drivers making their first starts of the year tomorrow. And we're going to start with Scott Milne on that one. Uh, if you caught the Iron Man preview, you know I talked about Scotty making his start over there. Uh, and uh, he's making it uh, also uh, here this weekend for Super Series. Uh, and he, it's going to be interesting what he, what he does. He was just outside the top 20, I believe, last year. Uh, and I, I want to say it was like his first year, but he ended up third in the Sportsman Championship um, and really, really started to show what he was capable of. He won a heat race, was a front runner a couple times in those heat races, and there's, there was potential there. So I'm excited to see what Scott Millen does here, making his 29 debut. And ironically, the guy behind him in this picture is also Joe Sabella, who is making his debut this weekend. Uh, but that's from, uh, he hasn't run for a while. And Joe, it was a, a podium, excuse me, a championship contender in Grand Masters. Uh, and then uh, and he took a took a year or so off. I'm really excited to have Joe back. And uh, as a Grand Masters driver who's going to be uh, hot in the mix there, I'm excited, very, very excited to see how he adds to what is already a very, very challenging group of guys. And speaking of, uh, Grandmasters, Steve Latanzi, veteran of the sport, been around a long time. For those of you guys who don't know, uh, he actually started things up, uh, oh, I should say continued things on with the United States Indoor Karting Championship many years ago. Awesome dude. Going to be out here playing with us from Arizona. Steve Latanzi, uh, hoping for no black flags, right, buddy? <laughs> the inside joke, uh, Latanzi likes to go hard. <laughs> we'll see what happens this weekend. Hopefully no issues. And, uh, Last guy, or one of the last guys I can talk about, Jeremy Aldridge, a Masters driver who I, I think this year we could see him start breaking in the top five. Really showed some moments of brilliance last year where he's starting to get better and better and make smarter decisions and is getting faster. And Jeremy could, uh, I think, really uh, raise some eyebrows this year. If he gets a full season, and he did miss the opener, but if he's able to knock out the rest of them, he's got a lot of other things going on. But if Jeremy can, can run the full year, I'm really excited to see what he can end up doing. Uh, as a Masters, never mind overall. And uh, cap things off my wild cards, Patrick Britton. Uh, fifth year, fifth last year, excuse me, uh, after a spirited season finale we've talked about before, going from 10th to 5th in the standings in that finale. Um, he's, he's a guy who's looking to get that crown back. He, a champion in 2017, uh, he definitely has what it takes. Uh, and this is going to be his, his debut on the year after missing the opener. But he's doing it now under a, a new banner, the Red Six Race Gear banner. That's his new motorsports gear and apparel company. He's actually uh, just started. Uh, pretty cool to see him uh, make make his own way and make things happen there. And be excited to see how that thing takes off. So that's the preview for round number two here, the 2019 CalSpeed Super Series. Appreciate you guys tuning in, and we'll see you at the track. <laughs>